Hello, ladies and welcome to episode 12 of Medical Today with me, Jared Rutnam. Of course, we're closing in on the end of season two. We've got another couple of uh, episodes to go. But as always, we have uh, quite a variety of topics for you in Medical Today. Now, today, uh, to begin the show, uh, we have our aging and well-being perspective. Uh, that's a little something we start off with on every show in season two. And to do that, uh, we spoke to Tansri Dr. Lim Wee Chai, the executive chairman of Top Glove Corporation Burhat. Over the week, we caught up with him and had a chat with him about his ethos and philosophy with regards to aging and well-being and with regards to life and moving forward at all times. Let's take a look at that interview. Tansri, thank you very much for joining us on the show. It's a pleasure yeah. and an honor to have you here Welcome. to uh, take time out of your busy schedule to join us and to talk to us about one of the things you extol a lot about is health and you know, well-being. So we're going to be talking about that and Dr. Nav and me are going to try to get some answers from you. Now, we'd like to start with the, uh, the importance of taking care of your health at an early age. You, know, but you have a perspective on this. Can you give us your perspective? You see, uh, we must do everything. We must have an uh, aim, objective. Okay, I will share it, uh, with my friend. Uh, my uh, work is my hobby. Exercise is my duty. Health is wealth. So, uh, why health is so important? Uh, money cannot buy health and time. Help can earn time. So normal life expectancy example uh, in Malaysia they say eighty years. So normal people will live uh, eighty years old. But if we are healthy, we can earn ten years extra, twenty, thirty or forty years extra. So my aim, my objective is to earn 40 years extra, so to live 80 plus 40 80 years, plus 40. 120, 120 years. Yes. Wow. Uh, that is my, my, so, my So that's your main objective, goal, objective, target. Target. Mm, target. So if we are not healthy, we will have a discount right. and lose. Uh, the, our time can lose, we can earn, can lose, just like do business, mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. earn money, you can lose money. Right. Very importantly, when I came in, I was quite excited because Dr. Nawin was talking about the five W's, Dr. Nawin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. Tansu should tell, he actually taught me about the five wells and he indicated it to all the staffs. Yeah. Tansu has 18,000 staff, everybody right. knows. So the five W's well. are also known yes. as the five wells. Five wells. Okay, Tansu, what is the, the five, five wells? wells. Oh, <laughs> yeah. This is very important. Mm -hmm. Five wells. In order to live until 120 years old, we need these five wells. Uh, first well is uh, we call clean well. In the morning, we wake up, we have to brush our teeth and uh, take bath. Eh? So, clean well means to us, we need to brush teeth three times a day and take bath two times a day. And then, after clean well, the second is to uh, eat well. So, our breakfast, our lunch, our dinner, we must eat well. Eat quality and variety food and 
not uh, quantity. Uh, we always eat moderately uh, variety. You know why? Our body is like smart factories. We produce millions of cells every day. Brain cell, heart cell, stomach cell, lung cell, skin cell, blood cell, bone cell, skin cell. So All many stem cells. cells. Mm -hmm. So we need good raw materials. If our raw material is good, we produce good cell or good products. We produce glove, I know. In order to produce good quality glove, I must have good raw materials. Right. So let's count down again. So the five wells, the first one is clean well. Mm -hmm. The second then one is eat, eat well. well. And then? The third one is to work well. Work well means that you have to work with uh, honesty, integrity and transparency. Uh, so that we work well, we exercise our brain, so we have a duty and responsibility to do. Uh, we have a commitment uh, in our life, in our work, so that we can live longer. If you don't work, your brain is not exercising. Mm -hmm. Like our leg, we don't exercise, we cannot walk. We done that. So we, we have to exercise our brain moderately. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, you need some uh, 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 vigorous exercise. Sometimes our brain needs to have some stress. Uh, needs to be challenged. Uh, yeah. uh, challenged. That's in line with right. what we have been talking about the aging process. Right. Yeah. Exercise Clean well, well, eat well. Work well, and then after work, we need to exercise, de stress. Huh? Mm. Uh, exercise is very important. Mm. I exercise uh, almost every day. I do yoga exercise or stretching exercise. Right. Every morning, 10 minutes, e evening, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then also, I. I so it's play exercise badminton. well is the fourth yeah, one? Yeah. The fourth one. Play badminton uh, Monday and Friday, two times a day. Golf, one or two times. Uh, uh, a week, badminton two times a week, yoga one hour on Sunday, uh, golf on uh, Tuesday and Thursday evening, play for nine holes, one, two hours we walk. Natural right. strength training. Um, so, so, so well uh, right. schedule. So after exercise, the fifth well. Uh, let, 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 let me try, try the fifth well. Uh, Sleep well. Yeah, <laughs> very important. Sleeping is very important. Yeah. Be sure. <laughs> Make sure we sleep seven to eight hours. Don't save one hour sleeping. The next morning, you lose two hours of productivity. It will not be efficient. So, in order to sleep well, make sure that uh, our room, the temperature must maintain uh, stable and suitable. Okay? And then, of course, our mind must be clear and clean. Don't cheat people and be honest, then we can sleep well. Okay? So, with these five wells, I'm sure we can live uh, more than 100 years. Right. Dr. That's Navin, I'm sure you have some burning questions. No, that's, that's how he does that. And then, when you say clean well, Tantri's company, Top Love, actually gives all the staffs toothbrush, two toothbrush per year. For them to clean tongue no clean need to toothbrush. brush toothpaste uh, the to rules. brush to paste tongue cleaner tender floss right why do you focus a lot on oral health oh very important you know why our truth is the thinnest skin eh, in our body you want the thinnest skin so our mouth is dirty why because we have food we have water we have oxygen in our mouth then where the bacteria can uh, thrive they thrive can and uh, produce and multiply many thousands and millions of bacteria once we open our mouth the bacteria will go in and they will produce plenty of bacteria and then this bacteria is the like enemy they will attack our throat eh? our throat the skin is very thin so they will go inside and attack you go do your bloodstream where our army, our immune system, they are fighting with them every day. So in order to reduce the bacteria or enemy, we must remove the food supply to the bacteria or the enemy. That's why our hands 
and uh, the mouth are the most dirtiest. Uh, uh, right. Clean right. hands, you have the gloves. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So we must clean. So I was watching a very interesting video about the gloves yeah. and how yeah. it's the first line of protection. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Or you have to wash your hands. Yeah. And we cannot be washing your hands so many times. Okay, here's, here's another thing, Tansri. Sorry, sorry to cut in. But I see apples here and I'm wondering why we are having apples here. So as you know, we are encouraged to eat well. Uh, eat variety right. and eat healthy food. Food is the raw material. So we give them good raw material that produce healthy cells. Just like you're producing glove or any product, you give them good raw material, produce good product. Yeah. You want to find a defective glove or product also difficult. Mm -hmm. If you give them good food, good raw material, you want to produce a bad cell also difficult. Right. So yeah. problem is in the past, people give you ten types of thing to eat or food to eat. You must select the good one. Don't take everything. Good one, good food also you eat. Bad food also you eat. That's why some people sometimes healthy, sometimes sick. Right. If you take only good and healthy food, no chance to fall sick. Mm -hmm. If you take care of the, the five wells, uh, right. you want to sit also difficult. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why we put the apples here yesterday, Tantri's company actually gave all his staffs an apple or an orange. Mm -hmm. For every month, all the staffs get the 18,000 from Kulim all the way up to Johor. Wow, wow. But I also understand, like, uh, Tansri has a nutritionist in house yeah. for yeah. all of Top Club staff. Yeah, we have five nutritionists, five. two medical doctors, mm -hmm. one dentist, mm -hmm. three nurses, one pharmacist, and four medical assistants. 16 of these healthcare professionals take care of the health of our staff. We have 18,000 staff and workers. So to us, healthy employees is very important so that they can stay well, they can work well, they have a quality mindset, they have quality life, they have uh, high efficiency and productivity. Right. So a lot of what I know about you, I talked to Dr. Navin and um, I was always wondering, and I don't know how, how much, uh, how much uh, you go to your cafes or your cafeterias to look at what's being served to your staff. Do, yeah. you, do you ever do that? Yeah, every week I go to their canteen because during our factory inspection, mm -hmm. so you inspect the production, the factory floor, canteen and even toilet. I will go and inspect the factory every and Monday at 11 o'clock. And the nutritionist also advises what to eat, the amount of salt yeah. in the food, yeah. the amount of kind of oil that you use to cook. Yeah. Wow. So if you start all that at a young age, that's how you can reach the 120 right. point. Yeah. You know, I think I, what's important here is what you're doing for your staff. And if you were to give a few tips to those of us who are uh, running companies and having people on this, what, what would your advice or your tip be? So the first thing, you must stay healthy and fit every fit. day. Right. To tell your staff all that every day. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's why we, we, we labor very well, fight the five wells, labor, and uh, explain to them, talk to them every day, every lunch. Mm -hmm. During lunch time or dinner time, mm -hmm. we will explain to them. So we labor, in the factory, in the office, everywhere, in the pantry, in the... Uh, you constantly pantry, remind pantry, them. Yes, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. remind them. Uh, stay healthy is very important. We need to stay healthy every day. Every day we need to improve. We need to stay healthy and add value. Right. Uh, one interesting point, uh, one point I think is interesting, is the fact that Tatsri talks about uh, being putting integrity into whatever you do yes. and keeping your mind clean. So cleanliness of mind is also very important. Yeah. And, and how do you practice that at work with so the people under you? 18,000 people. You want to do well, you yeah. want to live well and do well. You want to be successful. You must be physically and mentally healthy. Mm -hmm. We need both physically healthy and mentally healthy. Thank you very much. Thank Tansri, it was a pleasure and an honour. Dr. Nawin yeah, always yeah, yeah. is an honour having you as a wingman. Thank yes. you very much. Yeah. 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 That was the very vibrant Tansri Dr. Limui Chai, Executive Chairman of Top Glove Corporation, Bharat. Of course, over the week, we were lucky enough to meet up with him at his office 
to talk to him about life and also about what he thinks about aging and well-being and the little things he does to make things better as he moves into the next era of his life. Well, we'll take a short break and we'll come back with more for you right here on episode 12 of Medical Today on BNC. I have a vision correction number, but I'm more than a number. When I'm not enjoying my little sunshine, I'm enjoying my city's modern architecture. My S-Law lenses go beyond my correction. Their creasel technology shields my eyes from reflections, scratches and smudges for optimal clarity. I'm more than a number. I'm a crystal clear catcher of the perfect image. See more, do more. s -Law. Ask your eye care expert for advice. I have a vision correction number, but I'm more than a number. When I'm not sharing ideas with my colleagues, I'm defending my kingdom on the back of a dragon. My eyes and lenses go beyond my correction. They keep my eyes relaxed to stay focused and protect me from harmful blue light. I'm more than a number. I'm the never tired dragon eye, eyes in. Ask your eye care professional. See more, do more, Essilor. Hello, ladies, and welcome back to Medical Today with me, Jared Rutnam. I certainly do hope you enjoyed that segment we had. Before we went for a break, we were talking about aging and well-being. Now, musculoskeletal problems is another issue most of us face at any one time, especially those of us who have sedentary lifestyles. Now, restoring mobility and keeping in motion is our next topic. Our on-site host, the very lovely Nuratha Amin, spoke to a Dr. Lao Kai Po, a consultant orthopedic and trauma surgeon from the Regency Specialist Hospital with regards to restoring mobility and keeping in motion. Let's take a look at Nuratha's interview. It is estimated 60% of the worldwide population aged 60 and above have some form of osteoarthritis. Understanding osteoarthritis will help patients to live with it better. With Medical Today, we have Dr. Lau Kaipo, the resident consultant, orthopedic and trauma surgeon, at Regency Specialist Hospital, to talk about osteoarthritis. So, what is osteoarthritis, Doctor? Yes, uh, uh, osteoarthritis is an active disease process mm. which involves cartilage uh, of destruction, uh, bone thickening under the cartilage and also new bone formation. Uh, osteoarthritis is a progressive uh, disease mm. uh, which uh, due to failure in repair of the cartilage. Right. Uh, osteoarthritis is one of the major cause of disability in the world apart from ischemic heart disease, uh, stroke, Ooh. and even cancer. I didn't know that. So how common is osteoarthritis? Osteoarthritis for those aged above 65 years old, okay. uh, that means in the elderly age group, uh, is estimated 60% or more will have some form of osteoarthritis. Mm. How about those um, who have osteoarthritis from accident cases? Yes. Uh, those are we, what we call it as uh, post-traumatic osteoarthritis. They mm. may have accident, uh, fracture the bones, and this fracture which is near towards the joint, for example, the uh, femur or the tibia. So mm. this is caused malalignment of the bone, and right. these, they are prone for osteoarthritis after some times and maybe about two to five years or even ten years after the accident. Right, okay, so what are the signs and symptoms of it? Uh, uh, signs and symptoms of the osteoarthritis, normally the patient will complain of pain at the joint. Okay. Apart from the pain, there will be swelling of the joint mm -hmm. and uh, reduced movement. So apart from reduced movement, 
patient may feel crepitus or what we call that uh, rubbing sounds of the joint when they move, they walk or going up staircase. So Ooh, the early sign may be, well, the early sign may be those having pain while going up staircase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could be one of the early signs of uh, osteoarthritis. Mm -hmm. So when they come to us as the orthopedic surgeon, uh, we will examine the patient after taking the history to know their risk factors. So after examination, we think that this is osteoarthritis, then we may send the patient for further investigation such as x-rays of the joints. And mm. um, quite uncommon, sometimes we want to rule out other causes. Mm -hmm. We may subject the patient to MRI imaging. All right, so MRI imaging, so that's the last but to confirm an osteoarthritis? Uh, uh, not all will go for MRI, not okay. necessarily. The x-ray? Uh, those, uh, yeah, the majority are the x-rays, only mm -hmm. uh, small cases when we are not sure maybe there are other associated factors or other causes, then may we subject the patient to the MRI. Otherwise, the uh, x-ray will be more than enough. All right. So how do we prevent osteoarthritis? Uh, osteoarthritis, uh, uh, we need to know the risk factors involved uh, mm. of the osteoarthritis. Uh, risk factors, they are what we call that uh, modifiable risk factors and non-modifiable risk factors. Mm -hmm. The modifiable mm -hmm. risk factors usually are referred to those that we can modify. Mm -hmm. Example, uh, the uh, body mass index or BMI. Mm -hmm. If the person has uh, those having osteoarthritis with BMI of more than 25 uh, kilogram per meter square. So this is uh, what we call that uh, overweight range, okay. uh, not mm -hmm. even obese, but overweight. Mm -hmm. So we will we'll try to reduce the BMI. I mean, those BMI more than 25, they are prone for osteoarthritis. Okay. Uh, apart from that, will be what we call the um, uh, mount alignment of the joint. Mm -hmm. Normally, the, these are due to accident cases, the bone or fracture, the bone are not in alignment. Yeah, what so, we this is called mount alignment. Right. Yes. So, these are what we call a modifiable uh, risk factor. Mm -hmm. Non modifiable risk factor would be like advancing age, we cannot stop the clock. Okay. Yes. Uh, female. Female is also. Uh, 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 Is it high uh, risk? Uh, yeah, uh, have a higher risk of uh, osteoarthritis than men. Than the men, yes. Oh, okay. In the world or only in Malaysia? I mean, all over the world. Oh, all, over all the right. World. Okay. Yes. So, are there cures for this? Well, I thought that actually there's no cure for osteoarthritis. Uh, osteoarthritis is a progressive disease which mm. we can control or slow down the process. Okay. Uh, so, to control or slow down the process, we need mm -hmm. some lifestyle modification, mm -hmm. such as uh, uh, let's say the patient has a BMI of more than 25, we we'll ask the patient to reduce their weight, to, to reduce their BMI to less than 25. Mm -hmm. uh, they will be also be advised to do some uh, exercises, like movement, like usual example, swimming or cycling or any low impact exercise like brisk walking. Right. Uh, if uh, the non-pharmacological or medication, without medication treatment fail, then we can give patients some painkiller to tie over a short period. Mm -hmm. uh, painkiller, uh, we cannot give for too long. Normally, we cannot give for more than one month because they got a lot of side effects mm -hmm. such as uh, gastritis, kidney failure or even uh, heart disease. Yes. Uh, so, you should not self-medicate. Mm -hmm. You should seek doctor if you need painkiller because uh, if you self medicate, then you may prolong, then if there is any complication arise, you, you may not Abuse. know. Mm. Apart from the painkiller, we have supplement like glucosamine, mm. or the other thing would be the intraocular injections like hyaluronan. Mm -hmm. And towards the end, if there is no other choice to uh, and the joint are quite bad, Mm -hmm. And uh, total joint replacement is the indication for the patient. Doctor, can you elaborate more on uh, hyaluronan? Uh, hyaluronan is a physical supplement of the joint. Okay, uh, okay in our joint, mm -hmm. actually, there is uh, in normal joint, we are, the cartilage are protected by a thick fluid. Okay. This thick fluid 
uh, hyaluronone mm -hmm. uh, used to protect the cartilage and provide nutrient to the cartilage. Mm -hmm. In the patient who uh, has osteoarthritis, this uh, thick fluid will be thinner mm -hmm. or, or even normal. So mm -hmm. this uh, intraocular injection of this hyaluronone it will replace this fluid. Okay. And there are two types of this uh, hyaluronic injection, mm -hmm. a single injection and also multiple okay. injection. Two types. And multiple injection will be repeated every week for three weeks to five weeks. And we may, if it effective, it may last for about a year. Mm -hmm. And we can repeat it as many times as possible. Okay. And what is uh, total joint replacement? Total joint replacement is an operation. It mm. is a life-changing operation. Oh, okay. Uh, because uh, you, you, with the operation, you don't need to have painkiller. You mm. don't need to go for uh, annual intraarticular injection, and mm. your mobility will improve much compared to before the operation. Mm. So this operation uh, normally are done in uh, elderly age group, uh, okay. 60 years and above. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, it is estimated it can last about 10, 15 years or sometimes up to 20 years. Oh, that's quite long. Yes. Okay. How uh, about cases like accident cases? Those accident cases who has a post-traumatic osteoarthritis, uh, if the joints are much damaged, then they have no other choice, although they are in the younger age group, yes, they are still indicated for joint replacement as well. All oh, right. Yes. Total joint replacement. Interesting. Okay, Dr. Lau, thank you for being with us on Medical Today. Thank you. All right. There we had it. A treasure trove of information with regards to restoring mobility and keeping in motion at all times. Just to give you some added information, musculoskeletal conditions and pain affect people at any time, any age. There are treatment options available. You really need to go out and speak to subject matter experts and of course specialists who are out there giving opinions and also advice at all times. So Nurata Amin spoke to Dr. Lau Kai Po, consultant orthopedic and trauma surgeon from the Regency Specialist Hospital with regards to restoring mobility and keeping in motion. Thank you, Dr. Lau. Thank you, Narata. We'll take a short break and come back with more for you right here on episode 12 of Medical Today. Stay with us. I have a vision correction number, but I'm more than a number. When I'm not teaching courses, I'm taking steeper grades and tight corners. My SLR lenses go beyond my correction. They make my vision as sharp as my reflexes to capture every detail from near to far at any speed. I'm more than a number. I'm a rapidly focusing champion of courses. See more, do more. SLR. Ask your eye care expert for advice. a vision correction number, but I'm more than a number. When I'm not enjoying my little sunshine, I'm enjoying my city's modern architecture. My Essilor lenses go beyond my correction. Their creasel technology shields my eyes from reflections, scratches and smudges for optimal clarity. I'm more than a number. I'm a crystal clear catcher of the perfect image. See more, do more. Essilor. Ask your eye care expert for advice. Hey Malaysia, welcome back to Medical Today with me, Gerard Ratnam. We just spoke about restoring mobility and keeping in motion. Dr. Lau Kai Po from Regency Specialist Hospital gave us some information. He spoke to our very lovely on-site host, Narata Amin, with regards to uh, staying or moving at all times. From there, we'll talk about rheumatism. Now, there's a lot of wives' tales with regards to that, but it's best we hear it from the experts now. 
not many of us know this, but rheumatism affects approximately 10 in 1,000 of all of us here in Malaysia, and that's quite a large number. Now, the person who's usually in charge of ascertaining this is a rheumatologist. So to talk about rheumatism, uh, our on-site host, Narata Amin, uh, went down to Makota Medical Center to meet Dr. Shalini Ramanujam. She's a consultant physician and a, and a rheumatologist from Makota Medical Center, and they spoke at length with regards to rheumatism. Here's the interview. Let's take a look at it. Rheumatoid arthritis, RA, and systemic lupus erythematosus, SLE, are autoimmune diseases. While RA is a chronic disease that affects approximately 0.5% to 1% of the adult population, SLE is a disease in which the body immune system mistakenly attacks healthy tissues in many parts of the body. We have Dr. Shalini Ramanujam to help you understand RA and SLE better. Thank you for having me on Medical Today. Yes, we're also glad to have you with us. So, Doctor, let's begin with RA. What is RA? RA is also called rheumatoid arthritis. It is a chronic inflammatory disease of the joint whereby the immune system is wrongly misguided and misdirected towards attacking its own joints. Now what happens in patients with rheumatoid arthritis is um, the joints become very painful, they become very swollen and if it is not treated early, the joints become swollen, deformed and this leads to great significant amount of functional disability. The disease in itself is very biphasic in terms of age distribution. Most patients have the disease between the age of 20 to 40, but it is not uncommon that teens develop the disease and oh. patients less than 16 years of age mm -hmm. when they develop rheumatoid arthritis, it's termed as juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Mm -hmm. What triggers the disease is very multifactorial. Most often, the researchers show that there is a high link of genetic affiliation to development of RA. But what studies have shown now, the actual um, predilection towards the disease is cigarette smoking, as well as chronic infections, um, such as uh, chronic gum diseases that are termed chronic periodontal diseases. This is why most patients who develop the disease have some degree of exposure to cigarette smoking, whether it's active smokers or passive smokers. Right, so um, mention about, it started as early as teenagers, right? So at yes. what age um, does arthritis usually start? Usually at the age of between 20 to 40. Okay. And for some strange reason, women have a higher predilection mm. uh, to develop the disease. In uh, the National Inflammatory Arthritis Registry in Malaysia, what we have found is that in a ratio of seven to one, seven women to one male develop rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. But there is also a significant portion of children less than 16 years of age mm -hmm. also do develop such symptoms. So what are the first signs of uh, rheumatoid arthritis? The signs can be very many. Mm -hmm. They can begin as simple as fatigue, weight loss, mm -hmm. or feeling unwell generally. Okay. But the most specific signs that these patients come about with is very significant amount of early morning stiffness that they experience mm -hmm. in their joints after a period of inactivity. And very often that happens in the morning when they wake up. But very specific symptoms that they notice is when their joints start swelling up. Okay. Very often it is the small joints of the hands, the wrist, the elbow, shoulders, knees, ankles and feet. And the distribution of these joint involvement are very symmetrical. Mm -hmm. So what happens, the joints become very painful and they become swollen over time. Mm -hmm. And this leads to functional disability. Mm -hmm. For instance, even opening the knob of a door or even opening the lid of a jar becomes a very difficult activity for them. Apart from the joints, RA also can have its effect on the lungs, the eyes, as well as blood vessels. So inflammation basically occurring everywhere in the body 
leads to the problems that these patients face. I see. So what is the best treatment for rheumatoid arthritis? Well, treatment in the sense, um, there are very many. We are very lucky that we are living in an era where treatment modalities for our age are just surplus mm. with the advent of researchers all over the world. But what is most important is understanding of the disease. Most patients fail to come forward in the absence of recognizing the symptoms early. So medications include the usage of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs to ease the pain and swelling, but most often the cornerstone of therapy is steroid usage. And steroid therapy is very beneficial, especially if we detect symptoms in a very early stage of the disease, but the usage of steroids are often not long-term. The mainstay of treatment would be the usage of disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs that are plentiful and these medications we tailor to the patient's expectations. So there are many there that we can choose from. The best so far where uh, we see rapid improvement of symptoms is this new therapy called biologic therapy whereby most of it are in the injection form and these are definitely a miraculous breakthrough in the treatment armamentarium of rheumatoid arthritis. Apart from medications, what we usually advocate patients to do is to have joint protective um, gears as well as joint exercises which are of utmost importance and we do a lot of counselling and education um, for patients as well as their family members because as you know this is a chronic disease and it is a battle that is often not won alone. You need the support of all family members to battle this disease. Yeah, correct. So Dr. Shalini, what are the signs and symptoms of SLE? SLE again is another autoimmune disease just like rheumatoid arthritis, predominantly affecting young females. Now again, it is one of those diseases where the immune system wrongly attacks different parts of the body. Now depending on which part of the body is attacked, the signs and symptoms of SLE may vary. Early symptoms can be as simple as regular fevers, mm -hmm. fatigue, weight loss, mm -hmm. but very specific symptoms that these patients endure are mouth ulcers, a typical characteristic rash that they notice on their face, especially on the cheeks upon mm -hmm. exposure to the sunlight. They also may experience loss of hair, joint pain and joint swelling mm -hmm. and sometimes they also have chest pain as a result of inflammation mm -hmm. surrounding the lining of the lung and the heart. Some patients can have kidney involvement due to SLE as well as brain involvement where they manifest as seizures and hallucination. All these symptoms are seen collectively along with specific blood test markers that are in the blood for us to come to a con conclusive evidence and diagnosis of SLE. So what causes uh, systemic lupus erythematosus? The precise etiology in development of such autoimmune diseases are generally not known for sure. Mm -hmm. But many postulate that genetic factors, UV light, exposure, medications, as well as infectious triggers can potentiate the risk of developing SLE. SLE being a common uh, disease just like rheumatoid arthritis being an autoimmune disease it is not uncommon for patients with SLE to have siblings or even first degree relatives with other kinds of autoimmune diseases like autoimmune thyroid disease and rheumatoid arthritis so it's basically autoimmune diseases are the banner the umbrella in okay. which these diseases coexist yeah. so it is important to diagnose them at an early stage in order to render treatment early. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about treatments. Yes. What are the current treatments available in Malaysia? 
Right. So depending on where the symptoms lie, mm -hmm. if the patients have predominantly joint pain and uh, joint swelling, we start off by giving uh, anti-inflammatory medications, painkillers, but the cornerstone of treatment for every patient who's diagnosed with SLE is a medication called hydroxychloroquine. This is very important because it helps stabilize the disease and prevents recurrent flare-ups. Depending on the symptoms, again, the escalation of therapy keeps mounting up. If involvement of the brain or involvement of the kidney is seen, then we have to go in with very strong medications that are called immunosuppressive medications. But these have to be given by trained rheumatologists because these medications, when they are given, they need to be monitored very closely with the uh, blood parameters. Mm -mm. So when you mentioned that um, genetics is like one of the main causes and about the current treatments available, um, is it curable? I mean all of us would want a cure for all these kind of chronic mm. illnesses but unfortunately autoimmune diseases like SLE simply do not have a cure. Okay. They basically are like diabetes and hypertension mm -hmm. but somehow people out there, they are more accept accepting of diseases like diabetes, hypertension and heart disease, mm -hmm. whereby they are able to continue medication and comply with medication. But the issue is not the same when it comes to rheumatoid arthritis and SLE. Mm -hmm. Many are promised a cure, but truly there is no cure. But what we can do is give medications to help control the disease so that the symptoms don't surface and patients don't suffer from the consequence of the disease. What would your advice be to all Malaysians on autoimmune diseases? Autoimmune diseases are treatable but not curable. So I would strongly urge young people with signs and symptoms of autoimmune disease to come forward for early treatment and diagnosis. Awareness is of utmost importance once a patient accepts and understands the disease that they have, treatment becomes very easy and the outcomes are extremely fruitful. So please see a rheumatologist because there are effective treatments to improve long-term prognosis and outcomes of patients with autoimmune diseases. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sharini Ramanujan, for being with us on Medical Today. Thank you. Nuratha Amin there speaking to Dr. Shalini Ramanujam, consultant physician and rheumatologist from Makota Medical Center. We'll take a break and we'll come back with our final segment right here on Medical Today. Stay with us. I have the vision correction number, but I'm more than a number. When I'm not sharing ideas with my colleagues, I'm defending my kingdom on the back of a dragon. My eyes and lenses go beyond my correction. They keep my eyes relaxed to stay focused and protect me from harmful blue light. I'm more than a member. I'm the never tired dragon eye. Eyes in. Ask your eye care professional. See more. Do more. Estee Law. a vision correction number, but I'm more than a number. When I'm not teaching courses, I'm taking steeper grades and tight corners. My SLR lenses go beyond my correction. They make my vision as sharp as my reflexes to capture every detail from near to far at any speed. I'm more than a number. I'm a rapidly focusing champion of courses. See more, do more. SLR. Ask your eye care expert for advice. The final segment of Medical Today on BNC 502, that's if you're on the Astro platform. This is Season 2, Episode 12, 
to be exacting. If that's too much information for you, we've got more coming your way. Now, in our accidents and incidents segment, we bring you a video on a weekly basis in season two. Now, this time around, we're looking at what one should do when he or she encounters a choking child. But remember, at all times, before you triage or triage or conduct any emergency routines, please call 999. Here's our video on a choking child. Let's take a look at it. Conscious infant choking usually cannot cough and breathe effectively. When you come across with this situation, you assume that the baby is choking. First, tap the baby heel and say, Baby, baby, are you okay? Then shout for help. Somebody please call 999 Ambulance. Immediately, take the baby, support the baby jaw with hand and arm on the baby chest. Head downwards to enable gravity to assist removal of the foreign body. Support the baby on your thigh. Deliver five back blows with the heel of palm in between the shoulder blades. Placing other hand at the baby head and support the neck. Turn the infant, make sure baby head is maintained downwards. And support the baby on the other thigh. Put two fingers in the middle of chest between nipples. Deliver five chest thrust. Repeat five back blows and five chest thrusts. Until the foreign body expelled or baby becomes unconscious. If the foreign body expelled, quickly bring the baby to nearest clinic or hospital for further assessment. If the baby becomes unconscious, rescuer needs to proceed with CPR. That was a video in our accidents and incidents segment. Remember, the first order of business in an emergency is to dial 999. I don't mean to sound like a child, but it's good to uh, be giving out this information every so often, just so we're cognizant of what needs to be done at the point of an emergency. Now, if you do have any medical inquiries for us, if you do have any questions for us, please do send us an email, send it to ask at medicaltoday.my, that's ask at medicaltoday.my, and we'll be more than happy to get you a reply to your question, or if you'd like for us to feature someone, please write in to us. Once again, all you have to do is send an email to ask at medicaltoday.my. Don't forget to catch us on our final episode. Of course, we've got a special coming up, but we can't give you any details for now. Our final episode next week, uh, we will be talking to Dr. Chai Dek Chum, a consultant emergency physician from the Regency Specialist Hospital, joining us right here on the final app of Medical Today on BNC. On that note, I'm Jared Rotnam Safar signing out. You have a fantastic day ahead and a pleasant week. Bye-bye for now.